Welcome to Talking Science Interviews. Matt Miller with you today. The CEO of Deadly Science is here to chat about their aim of bringing STEM resources to remote schools across Australia. Mr. Corey Tutt is my guest and it's been again on the other side of this. On Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts and YouTube for over 550 episodes, this is Talking Science. Corey, thanks for a little bit of your time. Welcome to Trexon, my friend. Thank you for having me. Um, I join you from outside Sydney Airport um, as science um, takes no breaks. So uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> no worries at all. Uh, as I say to Dr. Brad Tucker all the time, science never sleeps, and it's exactly the same with your work as well. Uh, joining us from wherever we can, this is the brilliant thing with the internet these days. Uh, you can be outside an airport, uh, fresh off a flight, and uh, join me for a podcast. Oh, it's engineering at its finest. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely is. Well, mate, you founded Deadly Science whilst working at the University of Sydney. What got you inspired to build this company from the ground up? Well, it, it comes from being a Camillory man, and um, I grew up with a love of reptiles and a love of technology as well. And I think that, um, you know, it's it really came from my, my pop. Um, you know, he was a, the probably the most gifted natural scientist that I'd ever met. Um, but he never really got told he could do science. And then it was kind of the same for me, being an Aboriginal kid. It was kind of like, you know, we get told that, um, you know, sport and art are really only options to, to be successful, but it's actually, you know, they're great things. But our people are the original scientists. We're the original astronomers. We're the first forensic scientists. If you're a gammon fellow and you get lost in the bush, the first people to come get you are the black fellas. Um, you know, so it's not quite CSI, but, um, you know, that's the first probably known forensic science of tracking and, you know, using observations to, to find your solutions. Well, you were awarded the New South Wales Young Australian of the Year for your achievements last year. What was it like to get that acknowledgement from your peers and the community? Oh, uh, look, it was, um, it was obviously very moving and, um, you know, it's a very um you know incredible experience but you know these awards are a responsibility they're a responsibility to the kids that look up to me they're a responsibility to the communities i serve and really with these awards it just makes me hungrier because i know that these kids they need role models in stem and um if i can be that person that's great or direct them to that person you know we all need a, a harry butler or a Brian Cox or a Kirsten Banks or a Carly New, um, and they're the people that inspire us, you know, with the trailblazers. And if, um, you know, if we can get some more mob in STEM and get kids, you know, loving science, then we can, we'll be a lot better off. Well, the devastating bushfires of last summer left a, a scar on much of Australia's east coast. Many schools were lost, many livelihoods, many homes. But Deadly Science was there with resources to get these schools back on their feet. Uh, what was that like to, to bring those resources back into the community uh, and really see them uh, take off once again? Well, I'll, even though I'm a Kimmel or a man, I was born on Ewan country. Um, I was born on the south coast, so it's my home. Um, it's, it's where I was born, it's where I grew up. And when I saw it burning, I was personally... Um, you know, it was it was like my own country burning, and I was devastated, um, like most Australians. And um, I just wanted to do something. And and the same goes for when the coronavirus pandemic happened, and uh, we had the towers in Melbourne. The first thing I did was sent books down there because books equal hope. You know, like you can find a book and you can get lost in a book, then you're gonna you know you're gonna find an interest and a passion. And there's two things we need in life, and that's passion and purpose. It's absolutely right. Well, for many of the remote communities in Australia, even without the threat of bushfires and coronavirus, as we get really in the metro areas, there's a significant lack of education materials for kids. Given how vast Australia is, how do you choose where the resources go? Um, I don't play favourites. I'll send them any, everywhere. You know, um, it's it's important that all kids everywhere get access to educational resources, especially STEM. You know, we need to encourage kids from a young age into science or STEM, not discourage them. 
Um, my partner's currently studying a master's in science um, teaching at the moment. And, you know, one of the, one of the things I keep bringing up is that, you know, kids lose interest in STEM from year six and then in year 10, and they think it's too hard. And it's, um, wow. you know, to me, that's, that's bad because we need kids that are inquisitive. Um, and, you know, we can't, we can't put these boundaries up with science because science is all around us. Um, I'm about to catch a cab to my hotel and that's a form of science. That's engineering, you know, that is um, fuel burning to propel us um, to get to our destination. You know, it's all around us. Um, and we need to start changing the conversations around how we view science. We've distributed more than 11,000 books and over 450 telescopes. But more than that, you've given students, as you've talked about, the opportunity to dream of even bigger things. Are there any schools or stories that have stuck out for you or, or stayed with you? Uh, look, you know, people can people set, tend to focus on the achievements like the Young Australian of the Year Award, the, that sort of stuff. And my greatest achievement in life has actually been helping kids learn how to read. Um, you know, that's a lifelong skill. Um, that's something they're going to carry on and hopefully teach their own kids how to read. And, you know, that's stuff that, that's the stuff that I hold dear. Um, you know, I, I love the fact that for the first time, Robinson River School has a microscope in their school or Warakunya School has a microscope in their school. You know, these, these are for the first time, you know, that has happened. So that's what I hold dear. Well, Corey, thanks for a little bit of your time. Uh, I'll let you go and catch that cab, but we should mention to people that they can jump on to deadlyscience.org.au for more information. Good luck as you continue to grow Deadly Science and looking forward to staying in touch as Deadly Science does some amazing stuff out in the community. Yeah, definitely. And my message to everyone listening is be brave, make a change. And if you're going to support Deadly Science, you know, donate to us or follow us on social media, whatever. Um, we can we can do it together so it's great